A boy named Richard, growing up on a sheep farm, had big dreams for his life. He loved the theater, movie industry, and expressing his creative side. He loved comic books and horror films. His horse riding skill got him his first role in a movie, and he became an actor. He loved the freedom of his lifestyle. Richard helped other creators write musicals and movies, but one winter, when he was unemployed, he wrote what he thought was his masterpiece with the help of a fellow actor. This was made into a movie, and Richard thought maybe his dreams were coming true, but the movie flopped. So, uh, oh yeah, so I have symptoms. I have symptoms that make life harder for me, like it makes it harder for me to succeed personally. Like I suck at time management. You know, that's a big skill that a lot of successful people have. Um, I'm <laughs> I procrastinate a lot. I don't, you know, like the idea of starting a time consuming task concerns me, <laughs> like this video. But I don't know, there's something about chasing my dream here. It gives me motivation that I've never had, you know. Uh, so I guess it's kind of a strength, you know, like. One of the strengths I forgot to mention was hyper focusing, which can be a weakness. Like, for example, if you're LR5 <laughs> watching a TV show, I end up hyper focusing on it and like end up watching TV all day long, which is why I tend to not watch TV until the end of the day. But hyper focusing can also be a strength. Like, one time I was drawing a picture of a shark. Ooh, I should have uh, find that. Anyway, drawing a picture of a shark, and I'll, you know, then I finished it, and I was like, wow, that was maybe what, like 20 minutes? Looked at the clock, it had been two hours. <laughs> I've been working on the shark for two hours and I didn't even realize it. Um, and then that's the thing too, like with my videos, uh, once I start, I do hyper focus until I finish. Kind of strength, you know, like when you have the kind of symptoms that I have, whether it be ADHD or not, uh, being creative, like it blurs me all the end. Like I love doing things I'm passionate about, like it's easy, you know, which easy for everyone to do something they're passionate about, you know, but when it's, it's a lot harder for me to do things I hate than it is for other people that have come here. You know, so I, I went to college, you know, and uh, I dropped out. <laughs> you know, I gave up. I gave up on my dreams. I gave up on life, basically. You know, I was just living for... I talk about that in my very first video if you see it. Um, if you see me. I was i I'm just been living for like the good times, you know, holding on, waiting for them and tolerating the rest, but now I'm like running down my dream, you know, I'm going down a specific road, you know, uh reaching goalposts, you know, reaching time markers, whatever you wanna call them. Like in a video game, it'd be save points. <laughs> you know, I'm getting closer and closer, but it's still a really long road ahead, you know? But when I posted my first video, I kind of did feel like a failure because, like, I thought out of all my Facebook friends and my Twitter followers that I'd easily get 100 subscribers right away, you know? But I only got 35. So, like, that right there felt like a failure to me. But, you know, as I see now, it just, it takes time to gain people who like you and who want to watch your videos. And now I've passed 100 subscribers. And, you know, I, like, when I first started, I thought by October I'd have a thousand. And now I realize <laughs> I need to, 
I need to adjust my expectations quite a bit. And, uh, but, you know, like Miley Cyrus says, it's the climb, you know? Like, I've been having so much fun with my videos, and I've been meeting the most awesome people here on YouTube. Like, you all are so amazing. I didn't realize how much of a wonderful music community there is here. Like, every one of you is so talented, and I love watching your videos, and, like, you're so sweet. Like, everyone is so nice. I love it. <laughs> I could have given up after that first video. You know, I could have been like, I only got 35 subscribers? Man, you know, like this is harder than I thought. It's not even worth it. But, okay, because it was fun and passionate, I just kind of figured like, no matter what happens, this is fun. Like, it is my life theme. <laughs> it makes, it does. Like, I feel, you know, even if this is just an expensive hobby, <laughs> it's so much fun. And it gives my life so much meaning and fulfillment, you know. And of course, you know, I'm always hoping that I'll keep growing and that I will get monetized and I'll even, like, eventually get a makeup deal or something. Apparently that's where the money is. You want to get a makeup deal. <laughs> you know, so I didn't stop. I mean, like, you know, I did way back in the day. But then I started again, and I haven't stopped since. <laughs> you know, but like, and I see a lot of my like my friends. You know, like they fail once and they give up, and it's so heartbreaking. It's so sad. You know, um, like there's so many stories of celebrities who fail, but now they're huge because they kept trying. You know, celebrities like Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Not that I need to say her last name. You all know Oprah just by her first name. <laughs> but did you know that she was fired from her first TV job? She was an anchor for a new show in Baltimore. The reason was supposedly she was unfit for television news. Ooh, ooh, uh, uh. <laughs> I bet that person is picking themselves. She's now one of the most famous American people. As a talk show host, media executive, actress, and billionaire philanthropist. But what if she had given up after being fired? What if she had believed what that person said? Jim Carrey was another celebrity. He talked about how he used to go to this comedy club and perform his skits. And his first performance, he was booed off the stage. But he continued to uh, practice in the mirror, and after a couple more years of perfecting his skill, he went back. And I mean, we all know Jim Carrey's story. <laughs> they took the criticism not to heart, but like they listened to the constructive parts of it and worked on themselves and became. <laughs> I don't feel like that's, you know, they became more, I don't know, yeah, sure, let's stick with better. <laughs> but yeah, so a lot of people are afraid to fail, and it, you know, there's a lot of reasons for this. There's a lot of reasons why people are afraid to fail, and uh, it basically boils down to how you were raised, you know, because um, a lot of our inner voices come from our parents and what they taught us, you know, like how we shaped our mind is heavily influenced by how our childhood was. So I was doing some online research and I try to be particular about my sources. So this is from a South African College of Applied Psychology and it goes, according to Professor Martin Covington of the University of California, the fear of failure is directly linked is directly linked to our sense of self-worth. Constant failure leads to practices that seek to preserve self-worth, uh, excuses or defense mechanisms. So, you know, when we're afraid to fail, we make excuses um, or like we procrastinate. And uh, it actually goes on to say there's four categories of students. Uh, in relation to failure. And uh, so the first category is success-oriented students. They see failures as a chance to try again. 
and then there's the second one which is overstrivers they avoid failure to the point of overexertion like they're so scared to fail that they work so hard and they like sacrifice their self-care in order to avoid failure so that's you know different than the first group which like they're like if i fail it's okay i'll just try again where the second group is like i cannot fail i cannot fail no matter what i cannot fail <laughs> and then the third group is failure avoiding they don't even see the chance of success and but they don't want to fail either so their solution is just not to do it you know like they they're the ones especially who make up the excuses and procrastinate like that's that's who i used to be honestly <laughs> like i just wouldn't even try um oh i guess actually that's the fourth one is they don't even try they're it's the failure accepting they're like no matter what i do okay so the third one is more like the procrastinators you know they don't expect to succeed but they also don't want to fail the fourth one they know they're gonna fail it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy they believe they're gonna fail to the point that of course they're gonna fail because they don't even like have a visualiz visualization of success and they're called failure accepting <laughs> but of course the real failure is giving up or not trying at all and a lot of people will just give up because of failure because failure does affect your confidence failure can really kill your self-esteem uh, and it distorts your perceptions of how achievable the goal is. Um, so this is all a summary of an article from Psychology Today, which I'll link in the description below. But yeah, so like when you fail, not only does it make you feel like your goal is less achievable than it might actually be, but it also makes you view yourself as less able than you are. It distorts your view of your own ability um, as the a quote from the actual article is that failure causes an emotional wound it can make you feel helpless and a lot of the fear of failure is unconscious it's you know lurking in the back of your mind and it leads to self-sabotage and you might not even realize you're doing it Uh, and then uh, Psychology Today goes on to give you uh, a tip on how to deal with it. it. It's like when you're trying to do something that you're afraid you're going to fail at, you can whisper or mutter to help you think. I think like one of their examples was like, you know, uh, if you're playing sports, you know, you're trying to shoot a basketball hoop or something, you mutter and whistle to yourself because it distracts your brain from unconscious self-sabotage. And then psychology, psychology Today also talks about willpower, how your willpower, uh, which allows you, helps you to succeed, you know, to power through those failures. Willpower is a muscle, and the more you exercise it, the stronger it gets, but you also, like any other muscle, it needs rest, and it needs to be fed. Uh, specifically, it needs glucose. Uh, another reason why crash diets are bad <laughs> Um, and then psychology today uh, also advises that when you're dealing with failure, focus on what you can control. So like I said in the beginning, I could have just given up. I could have been like, you know, I don't even have 100 subscribers yet. I should just stop making videos and give up on my dream, and, you know, or you know, I could have stayed at drunk. You know, I could have kept taking the easy way out. But I've always, I've always like thought I was destined for something great. <laughs> you know, and I wanted to have that feeling, and I wanted to have that belief. And I know that each failure, you know, 
every day I go without having a thousand subscribers. <laughs> Every time I feel like my video doesn't do as well as it should, which by the way, you all make me feel so great about my videos. Like, I always feel like such a failure. Like, it's kind of a two-way street. Like, I am super proud of it. You know, like, I'm like, wow, I did that. That's awesome. But I'm also like, it could have been so much better. So it's kind of like this dual perception I have of my work. Which I guess is kind of a good thing. Like Bob Ross would say it's a good thing. He always says if you're ever satisfied with your artwork, then like that sucks. Because <laughs> then you're done and you don't feel the need to create more. So I guess it's a good thing I'm never satisfied with my artwork. You know, it keeps me going. That's what failure is supposed to do. Each failure is supposed to motivate you to do more, try harder, do it again. Because the more failures you have, the more likely success about to come to play. So you remember the boy Richard I was talking about in uh, the beginning of the video. So his full name or his stage name is Richard O'Brien and you might know him as the co-creator of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So yes it's true that movie flopped when it first came out. And so for all Richard knew, he had failed. But a lot of times what originally looks like a failure, after a period of time, it shows up that it's actually a success. So even when you think you failed, you might actually have succeeded. Um, there was a video I was watching that gave me the idea of talking about Rocky for a picture show and I'll link that video below but the um, the creator of that video says although Rocky Horror is a classic treasure now and too many is considered the best thing since the invention of the train which like I thought was like kind of odd thing to compare it to like a train not the invention of the plane <laughs> but anyway he goes on to say what with the still many conventions and celebratory screenings of the movie and honestly, it's hard to imagine that when the movie originally came out, hardly anyone saw it. It flopped on an epic scale. So what went wrong? I don't know, it was 1975, so maybe people were going to see Jaws instead? Or maybe the public at first didn't know what to make of it. However, thanks to late night screenings and word of mouth, the movie very quickly gained its cult status. And from then on, the movie has been recognized as the masterpiece that it is. And in 2005, Rocky Horror was recognized as being culturally significant. You know, like that's what's important here is your audience. You know, you may be a failure to some people, but to other people, you're a huge success. And you can't please everyone. So you just gotta go with the real you, your passion, and eventually you'll find your right audience and they'll find you. You can't have success without having failures. So go check in. Uh, so I think uh, now we know. You told me one of your goals is to do more yoga. So how's that going? Let me know. Hopefully you've been doing it. If not, no, no worries. You know, just keep, you know, try again this week. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> So uh, last month I told you I didn't have a new goal because I was going to try to like submit down the routine I had once had submitted down. <laughs> but um, and I've been doing better. I've been playing a lot more music, you know, I've been practicing my instruments a lot more. However, I haven't been stretching very much at all and um, I haven't been doing my night routine very much either. So I'm going to take another month to keep <laughs> to keep focusing on playing my instruments and really focus on stretching and really focus on my night routine. So then maybe next month I'll actually be ready to try a new goal. Alright, so thank you again for joining me. Thank you for watching till the end. And I hope you all have a great week. I'll see you next Wednesday and love you all so much.